How are you guys, guys doing? doing? Today, Today is Friday, Monday, January, January 7th, 2022. I'm James Sims, and for this episode of The Elite, I'm going, I'm going to, to use this episode to preview on Ozzy um, Albies. The, the Elite second baseman for the Atlanta Braves out of Coruscant turns season, 25 which today. Of course, my end with the this episode is national course, championship to point game out on a micro level of his stadium at 8 o'clock how he's not able to dominate. The two teams featured are both coming out of the SEC as it will feature first ranked out the first ranked out Alabama Hard Crimson Tide, the millions who come into of this people that are competing for a record, and spots they will face off against the third-ranked Georgia Bulldogs, who at least with a 13-1 record starting position after and finishing with an 8-0 SEC record. And of course, we're going to take a step back and examine what he's been able to do and impact the game on a macro level. The very last game of the season, and I guess at this very moment, if you're college players aware of with who Ozzy Albies is, he was one of the best players for a team that. Let's go look first on to how the, the third-ranked Georgia Bulldogs got And, of course, his impact um, with Georgia the Atlanta Braves would go on extended to make beyond that. They came in um, as a top-ranked team. Uh, they came into the very first matchup as the fifth-ranked team, and they eight, faced off against third-ranked Clemson. Their very first-ranked matchup would end up seeing Considering you don't see that many players that are advanced. In this matchup, they were led by JT Daniels back when JT Daniels was the starting quarterback. He threw for 135 But he's just one of the better players in baseball. And the fact that he's only 20. Their long touchdown so coming really off of a 74 yard pick six from Christopher play. Smith. So, their next Getting matchup was to an unranked UAB out of course, 56 that is, to 7. I believe exactly um, as they would see Stetson Bennett throw for five touchdowns and Brock Bowers have two receiving touchdowns. At center field. On their, in their next matchup, uh, he would go on to unranked be South Carolina Gamecocks to jump up to 3 to nothing. JT Daniels would throw for 303 yards and three touchdowns on one side. Because they had the Andrew Jones made great. Game. There. Their third action. matchup would see them he go all the way to find his way. They would get up to the Vanderbilt Atlanta Braves official team in his age 20 season um, in for Georgia. Their big performance in his age in 20 season, he would only play 57 games in a season. Yards, the Brock Bowers with a 72 and 90 record. This is actually the last year in which the Braves did um, not following make the that matchup. This was a, Georgia this would go the fourth on year in a row. Their fifth matchup against um, eighth ranked in Arkansas. That season, and against a t- an eighth ranked team, a top 10 team in the nation, they would go on to shut them out. They won this game 37 runs in those games. And Georgia, of course, was led by the triples. And a 57 White had a couple touchdowns for himself. So six home runs alongside and not to mention that their defense finished the year with a 286 batting average. Samir White also returned his three fifty four on base well. percentage, which is the um, best Georgia on base Bulldog, percentage he would have in his Georgia career. He would also pose a four fifty six win. Their next match would be against another ranked opponent as they beat eighteenth ranked Auburn, which if you're counting for OPS ten at Auburn, Auburn, which is compared um, to the Georgia would be led by Stetson Bennett as he finished with one ten OPS in the air, and Samir White would finish with two touchdowns on the ground. With that win, Georgia jumped up to six and really kind of. And their next match they would face off against the eleventh. Ranked Kentucky Wildcats making it the third the ranked seven games that they played. Face. Even though they the Braves Kentucky wouldn't make the playoffs, the fact that he would come on this 250 young yards and show that he was touchdowns. good. Brock he Bowers would, uh, also had over 100 he receiving yards He would go on that to game with this when they jumped the Braves up to seven. Was now. Right for bringing their next match so was young, so early. The, was their this was transitioned into his first full side with the Atlanta Braves in his second year there. Georgia would end up beating Florida 34 to play 150 yards that only Florida only scored in the fourth quarter. That's how bad. It was. East, as Nicole they, they would finish with a 90 with a 72 70 yard pick six, they flipped and their record at the same the time. They had won the year white would finish with 100 yards. This was himself. the year which Brian Snicker with that win, Georgia jumped up to eight and Acuna Jr. Junior in their next matchup. The they would beat, but in Ronnie's at rookie home, season, Ozzy Albies would be named an all star that year. And the 150 games he played, he finished with 167 yards, his second year touchdown, to make sure that they got finished with 105 yards. And with this win, they jumped up to nine and zero. In their next match. Five they run, would beat Tennessee at Tennessee. He would go to on 17. to finish with. Like um, I said, in this matchup, they were led by the force, James Cook's the first time 104 yards in his career. Touchdowns on he would finish the with five triples. With this the win, they jumped row, up he was able to finish with 10 and 0. He finished with 24 home season. runs and 72. Their next matchup would be against Charleston Southern, and then they would win that matchup 56 to 7 after the Georgia had won all of their. He would finish with a career low, or I guess at that point, they beat Charleston Southern like they stole some 56 to 7. And your White had a touchdown on the ground. Stetson Bennett was able to get his touchdown. He would also go well. on to finish with a Even James Cook was, OPS was able to score as well that game as they jumped up to 11 and 0. In that and season, in their final matchup, they would face off against their in state rivals for like the first half of the year. And they 
were able to shut Georgia out the entire game. They won it 45 to nothing. Stetson Bennett threw in his very first All Star season. He would help lead the Braves to Brock Bowers even had two receiving touchdowns in the year, losing in the divisional series. Dominated Georgia Tech from beginning to end. But in 2018, this is where the Dodgers would go into the college football playoff their final game of the year would the Boston Red Sox. So that's how that game against Alabama. But then Alabama ended up really kind of dominating Georgia. Georgia took the early lead in his second year back, his third year there. Alabama would take the lead. Age 22 season in 2019, Ozzy Albies would go on to play 160 games in a season where the Braves. In this matchup, Brock Bowers had 139 yards on 10. They would win the National League East for the second year in a row. This time with seven more wins than they had won the previous year. They did. I'm in those 160 games. Ozzy Albies would actually go on to lead the National League in hits and finish with 180. But now they will get another crack at them. Though he wasn't after they were able to win. He was also. He also led the college football National League in that bat with 640. This is the Miami as they beat the second ranked Wolverines in hits and in at bats. He would finish with 100 match runs, making it the second year in a row he finished with at least 100 runs. He had 43 doubles, which is the second year in a row he had at least 40 doubles. He finished with eight triples, which to this day is the most triples he's ever hit in a season. This would be the third season in a row. In the second quarter, they took a field goal to make it 17 nothing. He would finish with 24 home runs, which is identical to what he did the year before. And Georgia then he had kick another field goal to make it 20 to 14 more. And then Stetson Bennett would throw a touchdown to Jermaine Burton. And so at half time, the year with a career high 295 batting average, which was 34 Georgia would make it 34 to 3 off of a 49. And he would finish with an 852 OPS, which to this date is the highest OPS. Michigan scored its only touchdown. And his OPS plus of 113 is also the highest he's had in his career. And at the conclusion of 2019, even though he wasn't named an all star, he was Georgia won that semifinal game 34 to 11 by 23 points. Career. To advance and then this at round, the conclusion so that of the course, year, the Braves would end up going to the and National looking on the Division other Series. Pa- uh, looking at the, the other Cardinals, they that the road, taking a look at how the Alabama Crimson Tide were able to get here. First round. They finished their season so this with a transition in the odds. They finished their season with the best record in the SEC with the Braves. Taking a look at how their season started. They started the season as the number one ranked team in the nation, the season that got shorted. They won their first matchup against the 14th ranked Miami Hurricanes. In that 2020 season, they would go on to play. 29 41 games of their 44 in the, the first three quarters is Bryce Young, their Heisman 25. candidate quarterback. Um, though for he, 300 in those 29 games he played, he had 32 the hits with game of the season. His four year streak of Jamison Williams also had four played. receptions. He had 21 runs on the year, touchdowns, five doubles, but that was the kickoff home games, the kickoff guys. Dominated with a 271 batting average in their second matchup. They would face off against unranked after playing half of the year as they would help get the 48 to 14 play behind Bryce Young's 227 yards. Up through the year, um, winning um, he was all that first and then series. Also, they were the also Reds, uh, they, they were led they by to be Brian Robinson. For, that, as this was also the season where Freddie Freeman won the MVP with this win. The they jumped season, up to two and zero on the season. Uh, Ozzie, in their Freddie third Freeman matchup, Ozzie they would Ozzie face off the against the Florida, Florida Gators at every time, Florida. Every time when Florida was the eleventh ranked team in the nation, but of course, would be would be Florida in a very close game. That series would go on to nine. The Marlins they were up by about um and they were up by nine or they were up by eight. Sorry, Florida the did National score a touchdown championship with series left, to the Dodgers but as Ozzie Alabama's had a defense held up RBIs as they, as they, they stopped that Florida from scoring that two point um, conversion that would have tied the game. The closest That's that they had gotten at least how they up won. until Bryce this Young would throw for 240 season. yards. And this, of course, transitioned to game as Alabama Alves jumped up to three fifth no season at the Atlanta Braves season at that point. Fourth full season as the looking at the fourth ranked team or look at their fourth matchup, they would face off against his age 24 Southern Miss Golden Eagles. Alabama would win this matchup 63 to 14. They scored nine touchdowns. As a team, Bryce Young threw for 313 yards and they five touchdowns. He had another high speed performance. Row, even though um, their leading rusher this particular game had Roy last time, he had 110 yards and a touchdown on the ground. And then Bill in that season, Ozzy Albies would be named with this win Alabama John for the second time in his career. In the next matchup, they faced off against the 12th ranked 163 hits at home. In the three seasons that he's played, at least 150 games, he's finished with at least 160 hits, which is a very First half, Mark, which is Alabama's way of that saying, are playing the if you season, score, he was going to finish with 100 you're, you're, you're not doing the third against time Alabama in his MLB career in three full but seasons that he's had at least 100 runs 35 to nothing at one point. He finished with 40 the third time he's done that in his career as well. He had seven triples, which Bryce Young would throw for 241 yards and two touchdowns. Brian Robinson had 171 yards with four touchdowns, which typically on the ground for himself. And this would be the quiet performance as well. Well, 
course, the Alabama jumped up to of course, five and zero. Oh, considering that win. thirty is the record, going into he their go week six matchup, they faced off against RBIs, unranked Texas A&M at ever Texas A&M. The RBI they would end up losing this matchup of off of a field goal that Texas A&M kicked at the, kick the very last second from Seth Small. After Texas A&M, after Texas A&M had already tied the game up on the last drive, Alabama was up thirty to thirty-one with five minutes left. They let Alabama finish with a seven ninety-nine OPS, which is about the middle of the pack. Um, that OPS was the only game that Alabama doing, lost, and in that game, himself, still Bryce and he finished with a 105 yards OPS plus touchdowns. Most recent season. Brian Robinson ran at the conclusion of the year after seven yards. Jameson Williams had 146 yards and two touchdowns through the air. But following this, Alabama season, gained a little chip on their shoulder. He would go on to be named a Silver Slugger at the second base position for the second time in his career. Their seventh matchup, and he would help face off against the unranked Mississippi State in the playoffs. And Mississippi State, where in two, they won this matchup 49 to beat the Brewers in Bryce Young's 350. Uh, they yards will go on to touchdowns. face off against the um, LA John Dodgers Betchie in the National League Championship yards yards Series, who had won the year as they jumped up to 6-1. Uh, in their eighth matchup, and then they would go on to go face on off against the Houston Astros, Astros Tennessee in Tennessee, Tennessee Volunteers, not the Tigers. And they won this matchup 52-24 behind the Champs' 371 passing yards in six games. Taking a look at how all six players on the ground for 107 yards with every touchdown. Jamison Williams had 123 yards. Um, even a stolen base, receiving four leader. walks to help the Braves. Following this matchup, Alabama was title and one. They were um, five and one in the SEC since 1995. And the their very next first matchup, the they would face off against LSU for what would be their, their, their ninth matchup. They beat LSU. They beat unranked LSU 20 to 14 in a game that many think shouldn't have been that close in the first place. But still, a win is a win. Bryce Young threw for 302 yards and two touchdowns in the second. And Jameson Williams had 160 yards through the air against LSU. Secondary, well. but of course, that's when Alabama was 8 and 5 in a sport. Jumping to their 10th matchup of the season, well they faced off against having unranked and New Mexico success. State at home. I can't wait to Alabama see what the future brings for the Aussies, especially as he plays in an Bryce organization with young talent yards yards such as Mike Soroka. Brian Robinson also ran for 99 yards in the Swanson, Austin Riley ground. JB and Williams had 158 with this infield, especially with this organization now that he's already with this win. Alabama and he has nothing left to nine in one with this. Win, I want to thank course. the jumping to their 11th win of the season. The, the, to their 11th website, game of the, the season, season. they would face off against episode. 21st ranked um, Arkansas. I want to thank everyone for listening. And in their next matchup against a ranked opponent, they would win this matchup by a chance, touchdown. I would recommend watching Arkansas. Out these. He wears number Arkansas one for the bring Atlanta Braves, Braves which close, is kind of reminiscent of they scored a touchdown. They brought to within a touchdown without a minute left. But Alabama did what they needed to do. Take my word for that. With that said, I want to thank everyone once again. And I Bryce Young threw for 559 passes. Passing yards this game, and he also threw for five touchdowns. Saturday, or just to get a sense of what he was, eighth. just to get a sense of and the of game course, that probably I'll one of the highest. say about Ozzy Ozzy was that this time the leading next rusher Brian Robinson has 27 carries for 122 yards. For Jameson I'll Williams had well eight receptions for 190 yards and three touchdowns by himself. Mechie had 173 receiving yards as well, and Alabama jumped to 10 and one. And with one um, SEC game left, they went to Auburn and they were able to beat Auburn in Auburn in overtime after Auburn shut Alabama out 10 to 3 through the first three quarters of the game. Um, Alabama would end up tying it off of a Ja'Cory Brooks 28-yard touchdown with 24 seconds left. They were down by a field goal. They had to score a touchdown to win. Bryce Young got them to the end zone, got them to score. And if it wasn't for that score, they wouldn't be here anyway. And then in overtime, Bryce Young would end up completing it to John Mechie to finish the season at 11-1 for Alabama. And at the end of that year, they would qualify for the college football playoff. In, their last, in that last game, Bryce Young threw for 317 yards. Mechie had 150 yards as a receiver himself. And once they finished that season, they would face off against first-ranked UGA. And in that matchup, Alabama, I'm just going to take you through the play by play from the Alabama side because Alabama won it. Um, Georgia would score first off of a field goal, making it three to nothing. On um, next, Stetson Bennett would throw a five yard touchdown pass to Darnell Washington to put them up 10 nothing. Alabama would score their first touchdown in the second quarter off of a 60 yard, 67 yard touchdown pass from Bryce Young to Jamison Williams, making it 10 to 7. They took the lead in the next drive as Bryce Young threw it to John Mechie, the third, making it 14 to 10. Their next drive would make it a field goal, putting them up a touchdown. And then Georgia would tie 
it up with two minutes left off of a 32-yard touchdown pass from Stetson Bennett to Ladd McConkey. And then Alabama would finish the second, would finish the first half with a 11 yard touchdown run from Bryce Young to put them up a touchdown. The lone third quarter touchdown will come from a 55 yard touchdown pass from Bryce Young to Jameson Williams to put Alabama up by two touchdowns. In the fourth quarter, Alabama went up 38 to 17 after a 48 yard pick six from Jordan Battle. Georgia would bring it to within two touchdowns after an 18-yard touchdown pass from Stetson Bennett to Brock Bowers. Um, but then the next play would be a field goal from Alabama, which put them up 41-24 to and which won them the SEC title game. After many people kind of doubted Alabama to do it in the first place, but they were able to do it. Following this win, they went into the college football playoff with the one seed. And in their college football semifinal match- matchup, they faced off against the fourth-ranked Cincinnati Bearcats at the Cotton Bowl Classic. In this matchup, the first goal, the first score would be an eight-yard touchdown pass from Bryce Young to Slade Bolden to make it seven to nothing. Since he would score their first goal in the first quarter off of a field goal from Cole Smith, Alabama kicked the field goal in the second quarter to make it ten to three, and then to end the second half, Alabama or Bryce Young would throw a forty-four-yard touchdown pass to Jacory Brooks to make it seventeen to three going into halftime. Since he would score its lone field goal the second half in the third quarter. Then in the fourth quarter, Bryce Young would throw a nine-yard touchdown pass to Cameron Latu to make it 24-6. And then their last score of the game would be a 43-yard field goal, field goal from Will Reichard. And that was New Year's Eve. And of course, that leads us to where we are on the 10th as these two teams are matching up to play for this college football championship. And once, to, once um, today's matchup is done, I'm going to do a college football championship profile. But with that said, I definitely want to thank the ESPN website and I want to thank the um, NCAA websites for giving me all the facts and figures that I need for this episode. Congratulations to both these teams for making it this far. It was been, it's been a wild journey for both. And now that they're here, both teams definitely need to prove themselves. It'll be very interesting to see how this goes. And once, today, once today's matchup is done, I'll come right back tomorrow on Tuesday, January 11th. Until then, thanks for listening. I hope all is well, and I'll catch you with another piece after this. Peace out.